Hello, this is an introduction to the uh, course Psychology 220, 215, Basic Statistical Methods. I'm Matt Andrzejewski, and I'll be your instructor uh, this semester. So uh, the purpose of this video and lecture is to give you a little background about statistics and uh, the things we're going to be going through and to talk through the expectations uh, for this course. So. We study statistics because we want to learn something. We want to uh, make a decision about some feature in the world. It could be something as benign as uh, which cell phone to uh, buy or um, what kind of treatment you might want to undergo for a particular condition. Um, it might uh, be related to a decision about whether you get vaccinated for a particular virus or a disease. Um, uh, or whether you undergo a medical test for cancer. Um, we uh, might want to answer those questions. So we might want to learn about uh, them, and we can learn about things from uh, the result of a, a number of different ways. We can critically think about something. Uh, that is, we can ponder the pros and the cons and um, sit quietly in a room maybe and uh, uh, come up with some ideas. We can ask an authority figure like a doctor or a physician or a psychologist or somebody like that or somebody we might not um, think of as an authority but maybe they are. Uh, we can have a religious experiment, uh, experience and that can uh, result in us uh, learning about something and, and making a decision. But I would contend that collecting data is the surest way to learn about the world. And the problem uh, with that is that when we are studying data in the behavioral sciences, they're very messy. Um, often at first glance, data look like an incoherent jumble of numbers. And statistics help us ask, answer the question, how do we make sense of these data? So in, in some statistical procedures are tools for learning about the world by learning from data. And learning from data happens to be the title of your textbook um, because that's what its focus is on. We want to make good decisions about the things that we observe and see. So the objectives of this course are to develop an understanding of what data represent, utilize methods for summarizing and describing data, develop skills for performing basic data analyses, being able to draw inferences from samples to larger groups. That's going to be a really critical uh, objective of this course to conduct statistical analyses on a personal computer and to develop a critical attitude in the reception of statistical information. We're, our, we're overwhelmed now in this information age on our phones, on our, on our tablets, on our computers, on our TVs, and so on with statistical information. And uh, we should develop a healthy critical attitude. Often you'll hear people say, you can prove anything with statistics. And I don't believe that to be true. I believe you have to be critical in the reception of quantitative and statistical information. What we're going to be doing to learn about these things, how we're going to learn about them, is that each uh, unit of the course is divided up into uh, some sections or, 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 or bits. There's a reading assignment. There's going to be a PowerPoint lecture about that reading assignment, much like this one. There will be PowerPoint demonstrations. I'll actually demonstrate some things in PowerPoint. We also have on-the-board exercises, on-the-board meaning on the chalkboard or on the whiteboard, um, where we actually will do things on a chalkboard or a whiteboard. I will demonstrate them, and then you have an opportunity to practice them. There are also going to be what I call lab exercises, or this is when you're going to be sitting at a computer um, and uh, going through some exercises. Then there will be practice or problem sets, and then I will be giving you feedback, and then we will do this for the next uh, unit. We'll have reading, lectures, demonstrations, practice, exercises, more practice, and a problem set. So that's why I say rinse and repeat, right? As if we need instructions on the back of a shampoo bottle. But um, in this case, um, that's how we're going to be going through this course. The reading assignment is going to be from a book called Learning from Data, which I'm an author on with a colleague of mine, Arthur Glenberg. Uh, in there are going to be the readings. The readings... Um, usually work through explanations uh, via examples. So we explain techniques by providing examples. There are also definitions and formula and practice exercises and valuable tables in the back of the book. There's also a workbook that accompanies this uh, class. 
um, the workbook units are um, um, available um, online. And what they have is they have on-the-board exercises. There are checklists of objectives. So if you want to uh, make sure that you're uh, uh, doing well in the course, you can check off the, the goals or the objectives of each unit. There are step-by-step -step Excel instructions. There are plenty of examples. There are practice exercises. And there are also formulae and what we call a decision tree in, uh, in that workbook. Um, we are going to be focusing on Excel. We're going to use Excel exclusively for uh, conducting the statistics in this course. You might hear from other people in other class sections. Um, um, some sections, uh, instructors don't teach any uh, computer use. In other class sections, they might use a more sophisticated um, tool, maybe called, uh, some of you may have heard of, it's called SPSS on, on this campus. Um, I've chosen to take sort of the middle ground. Excel is a very powerful program. It can be used for not only statistical analyses, but can be used in a variety of other contexts that might be useful for you. So if you're a business school major um, and you've encountered any accounting, um, then you're probably doing it in a spreadsheet like Excel. But Excel can also be a database. It can also generate graphs, and it's pretty user-friendly. That uh, contrasts with SPSS, which does one thing, and that is it conducts statistical analyses. Um, Nobody does uh, statistical analyses by hand anymore, um, or, or I think their, their, their utility is fairly limited, and it turns out that human beings make mistakes, and we make mistakes all the time. So computers don't make mistakes. They do exactly what we tell them to do. So that's why I've opted for Excel over the other options. This is what Excel looks like. Um, if you've never used Excel before, um, that's okay. The first unit in the workbook is an introduction to this program. I'm a Mac user. This is a Mac capture of an earlier version of Excel. Um, in the workbook, I have captures of several different Excel um, uh, uh, versions, but um, they all pretty much look the same. The, the, the headers and some of the menus might be a little bit different, but um, utility is, um, and functionality is preserved across the the entire um, list of versions. We're also going to be using real data uh, to help us understand the power and usefulness of statistics and we're going to be exploring two uh, real and interesting data sets we call the smoking study and the maternity study. The smoking study is from Dr. Tim Baker in the University of Wisconsin Center for Tobacco Research and Intervention and uh, this is a study uh, with 608 participants on the best way to help somebody quit smoking so it's a large data set, and uh, we're going to be using that for some of the examples. Second study we call the maternity study. This was a study done by doctors Janet Hyde and Marilyn Essex at the Wisconsin Maternity Leave and Health Project and the Wisconsin Study for, of Families and Work, and there were 244 families who provided data on marital satisfaction, child-rearing child styles, and other household events. It's a large data set as well. Um, the reason we focus on these two data sets is that uh, we can illustrate a number of different techniques using the same data without having to introduce a new study or a new experiment. You know, there's, there's a lot of statistics textbooks, you know, start by uh, uh, teaching by example, the, much the way uh, we do as well. Uh, but they, at, at each juncture, they're introducing a new experiment, a new design. We're trying to... Uh, uh, cut down on the number of experiments that we go through, and uh, so it um, you can pick right up into the uh, analysis. Your grade is going to be based on um, a number of things. The first thing is that there are uh, going to be 11 problem sets assigned throughout the semester. At the end of each unit, there's a problem set. Um, your best 10 count, they're worth four points each, so that's 40% of your grade. There are two exams, which are 30% per each, so that 40 plus 30 plus 30 is 100. Uh, the two exams uh, will each have two parts. One is computations on small, small sets of data. The other is going to involve terms and definitions, interpretation, multiple choice questions, and so on. I do something kind of strange uh, with uh, or different in terms of the problem sets. Um, and that is if first you don't succeed on uh, doing it, you will be asked to do it again. Um, and I only grade these when your problem set is done uh, correctly and completely correctly. Um, 
So if you get it completely correctly in the first try, um, if you do it correctly, 100% uh, correctly, the first time you get four points, and you get one point off for each successive try. If I ask you to resubmit your problem set, that what that means is I've acknowledged uh, that you've handed it in, and I, and I will give you some feedback. You will sub submit problem sets via Dropbox, but then you, what you need to do is correct the incorrect parts. We know from uh, research that if you don't practice uh, doing um, it correctly, you won't remember it. You won't uh, do it for the, for the exam or in the future, so I want you to practice doing it correctly. Um, the other uh, part of this course that's going to be uh, maybe a little bit different is all the material is on D2L, and uh, that's how I'm going to be delivering it. And one key uh, thing to recognize about D2L in this course and uh, the progression through this course is that this summer I started a new uh, thing in Psych 215, and that is that to ensure that you are making progress through the objectives and the goals of the class, after each unit, there is something I call a check for understanding, or CFU. It's a 10-item quiz um, that you have five minutes to complete online. You can take it as many times as you want, but in order to proceed to the next unit, you have to get at least eight out of 10 questions correct. So to proceed to unit two, you have to complete the CFU for unit one with at least eight out of 10 of the questions correct. If you can do this in an unlimited number of times, but you need to know your material and you need to be able to answer those questions quickly. And that's what I want. I want you to be fluent with the material in one unit before you progress to the next. I've included a video on the D2L content area. Um, you can take a look at that and see how we're going to be delivering material uh, for this course. But hopefully we'll have a good semester and hopefully this will get you started on uh, Psych 215. If you have any questions uh, for me, there's a syllabus posted on the uh, on D2L um, in, the, in my email. Uh, look through the syllabus pretty closely if you have any questions. Usually there's an answer in there, and if not, you can um, zip me an email and I'll, and I'll get back to you as uh, quick as I can. So here's to a good semester. Talk to you soon.